Hello Future Engineers, subscribers, viewers, and students. Here is another video in Plane and Solid Analytic Geometry 3 Part 2. So this is all about uh, problem solving on the topics considered in Plane and Solid Analytic Geometry 3. So this is problem 2. Determine the coordinates of the foci of the ellipse whose equation is 25x squared plus 16y squared minus 150x plus 128y plus 81 equals 0. So this is indeed an ellipse because the coefficients of the second degree terms are both positive and not equal. So we complete the square in x, factor out 25. So we have 25 times quantity x squared minus 6x plus 9, where 9 is half of 6, negative 6 quantity square. Then we have plus 16 quantity y square plus 8y plus 16, where 16 is 1 half of 8, which is 4, 4 square is 16, equals negative 81 plus 25 times 9, the new terms in the left side, and 16 times 16. So equals negative 81 plus 25 times 9 plus 16 times 16. So we complete, we write this in factored form, 25 times x minus 3 square plus 16 times quantity y plus 4 square equals 400. Divide everything by 400 to make the right side 1 and we transform this equation into the standard form of an ellipse. So we have x minus 3 square over 16 or x minus 3 quantity square over 4 square plus quantity y plus 4 square over 5 square or 25 equals 1. So this is the standard form of an ellipse since 5 square which is bigger than 4 square is under y so the major axis is parallel to the y axis. Here a is 5 B is 4, and C squared of 5 squared minus 4 squared, so 3. So C is square root of 5 squared minus 4 squared, so C is 3. And we can now find the coordinates of the foci. By the way, the center is at 3 comma negative 4, since the major axis is parallel to the y-axis, 1 foci f1 is above, and it has the same x-coordinate 3, then negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So f1 is 3 comma negative 1, and f2 is below the center, 3 comma negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So f2 is a 3 comma negative 7. We then proceed to problem 3. The arc of an underpass is a semi-ellipse 60 feet wide and 20 feet high. Determine the vertical clearance at the edge of a lane if the edge is 20 feet from the middle. So let's draw the figure. We have an arc, semi-circular arc of an ellipse 60 feet at the base and 20 feet high. So imagine that this is the origin, A is 30 feet on the x-axis, B is 20 feet, so the expected equation is x square over 30 square plus y square over 20 square equals 1. And we have an end of the lane here, 20 feet from the middle, and the height vertical clearance at the edge of the lane is, let's call it y. The expected equation of the ellipse is x square over 30 square plus y square over 20 square equals 1. Then we substitute x is 20 to solve for y here. So 20 square over 30 square plus y square over 20 square equals 1. So simplifying, this is 1 minus 20 square over 30 square. 1 over 4 over 9 is 5 over 9. So 5 over 9 times 20 square. Then extract the square root. So y is, is 20 square root of 5 over 9. 
in decimal, that's 14.91 feet. Problem 4. Sketch the graph of the curve 25x squared plus 16y squared minus 150x plus 128y plus 81 equals 0, which is this ellipse here. So we then proceed to this equation so that uh, the procedure is the same as that. Since this problem, this equation of ellipse is the same as this, we, gen we then proceed to the standard form of equation of ellipse so that the center is at 3 comma negative 4, A is 5, B is 4, C is 3, and the center is at 3 comma, latus rectum is 2B square over A, so 2 times 4 square over 5 is equal to uh, 6.4 units half is 3.2 units the distance from center to the rectrix a square over c or 5 square over 3 so 25 over 3 and the eccentricity is C3 over A5, so 3 fifths, and it is less than 1.6, is less than 1. So we then locate the center first. Let's have the coordinate axis. Center is at 3, comma, negative 4. Focus, upper focus is 3, comma, negative 1. Lower focus is 3, comma, negative 7. Then vertex 1, which is here, 3 comma negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. So vertex is 3 comma positive 1. Vertex 2 is 3 comma negative 4 minus 5 negative 9. So vertex 2, 3 comma negative 9. Then vertex 3 is same y, negative 4. 3 minus b. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So this is negative 1, comma, negative 4. Vertex 4 is 3 plus 4, 7. So 7, comma, negative 4. Then the directrices, negative 4 min plus d, negative 4 plus 25 over 3. That's 13 over 3. That's 13 over 3 is 4 and 1 third. And we cannot see 4 here. But let's just imagine that the equation of the horizontal line, upper directrix, is y equals 13 over 3. Uh, by the way, the left latus rectum is 3 minus 3.2. So negative 0.2 comma negative 1. The R1, I'll call this R1. Supposedly, this is R1. So, R1 is 3 plus 3.2, 6.2, comma, negative 1. L2 is at negative 0.2, comma, negative 7 here. And R2 is at uh, 6.2, comma, negative 7. The upper directrix, as I said, is negative 4 plus 25 over 3. It's 13 over 3, supposedly 4 and 1 thirds, but we cannot see 4 and 1 thirds here because of the limited view. So I'll just put it there, but write the correct equation of the directrix, upper directrix, y equals 13 over 3. The lower directrix is negative 4 minus 25 over 3. And that's y equals negative 37 over 3, negative 12 and 1 third. We cannot see negative 12 here. Let's just imagine what is it. The important matter is the equation is correct. y equals negative 37 over 3. Then we draw smooth curve through these points, which is the ellipse whose equation is 25x squared plus 16y squared minus 150x plus 128y plus 81 equals 0. Problem 5. 
the major axis of the elliptical path in which the Earth moves around the Sun is approximately 186,000 186 million miles and the eccentricity of the ellipse is 1 over 60. So determine the apogee of the Earth. The apogee is the farthest distance between the Earth and the Sun. And the Sun is of course located at one of the foci. And that is equal to A plus C. It will be shown here. While the shortest distance between the Earth and the Sun is called perigee, and that is A minus C. So determine the apogee of the Earth. Take note that eccentricity is C over A for the ellipse, so that's half of 186 million miles, so 93 million miles. This is A. This is the center, so this is one of the position of the earth, one of the positions of the earth because the earth revolves around the sun and the sun, the farthest distance, so the sun should be here and the earth should be here. So this is A and center to the one of the foci is C. Therefore, the apogee is A plus C. Apogee, apo equals A plus C where C, where eccentricity is C over A. Therefore, C is A times E, A times eccentricity, where A is 93 million miles. So substitute 93 plus 93 times 1 over 60. So the apogee is equal to 94.55 miles. Remember, this is the farthest distance between the Earth and the Sun. 6. Sketch the graph of 16y square minus 9x square plus 36x plus 32y plus 124 equals 0. So this is a hyperbola because the coefficients of the second degree terms are opposite in signs. But we do not know yet if the major axis is parallel to the y or parallel to the x until we we transform this into the standard form of equation of a hyperbola. So this is a hyperbola, by the way. So let's complete the square in y. So 16 quantity y squared, then plus 2y plus 1. So 16 times quantity y square plus 2y plus 1, where 1 is half, the square of 1 half of 2. 1 half of 2 is 1, 1 square is still 1. Then factor out negative 9. So negative 9 quantity x square minus 4x, 36 divided by negative 9 is negative 4x. Then complete the square plus 4, half of Negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 square is 4. Then equals negative 124. So negative 9 times negative x square minus 4x plus 4 equals negative 124 plus 16 times 1, the new term here. Then negative 9 times 46. So equals negative 124 plus 16 times 1 minus 9 times 4. Simplifying. So this is 16 times quantity y plus 1 square minus 9 times x minus 2 quantity square equals negative 144. So divide everything by negative 144 so that the right side is equal to 1. We now transform this equation into the standard form of the hyperbola. So since we divide everything by negative 144, so that means under the squared x term would be positive. So it is x minus 2 quantity square over 16, and 16 is 4 square, minus quantity y plus 1 square over 9, and 9 is 3 square, equals 1. So that means because the positive term is the squared term, the transverse axis joining vertex 1 and vertex 2 
is parallel to the x-axis because 4 square is under x minus 2 square although it is greater than 3 but remember this can be less than 3 or even equal to 3 so that means uh, a is 4 b is 3 and c which is a, c is square root of a square plus b square is 5 so a is center is 2 comma negative 1 first then a is 4 b is 3 and c is 5 where 5 is square root of a square plus 3 square b square for hyperbola so having located the the center and the major axis parallel to the x-axis we can locate the foci so 2 minus the vertex first v1 the left vertex is 2 minus 4 so negative 2 let's have the coordinate axis length of latus rectum 2b square over a 2 times b 3 square over a 4 so it is 9 over 4 or 4 point, 9 over 2 or 4.5 so half of that is 2.25 eccentricity is c over a so 5 over 4 the distance of the of the direct recess from the center is a square over c 4 square over 5 so 16 over 5 and in decimal that's uh, 3.2 So let's now sketch the graph, have this coordinate axis first, locate the center which is at 2 comma negative 1 as shown. One vertex is 2 minus a, 2 minus 4, negative 2 comma negative 1 here. This is v1, negative 2 comma negative 1. Then v2 2 plus 4 is 6 comma negative 1 f1 is 2 minus 5 so f1 is at negative 3 comma negative 1 and f2 which is here is 2 plus 5 7 comma negative 1 then v3 b is 3 so negative 1 plus 3 is 2 so this is at v3 2 comma 2 by the way the direct rex is at distance 16 over 5 from the center so to the left 2 minus 16 over 5 2 minus 16 over 5 is 6 negative 6 over 5 or that's negative 1.2 the right directrix is 2 plus 16 over 5, 26 over 5 or 5.2 from the center, from the origin rather, from the y-axis. So that is x equals 26 over 5. V3 is, as I said, 2 comma 2. And V sub 4 is here. Uh, 2 comma negative 1 plus 3 is negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 so this is at v4 2 comma negative 4 then length of latus rectum 4.5 so that means half half of 4.5 is 2.25 so going up negative 1 plus 2.25 so this is at negative 3 comma 1.25 so that's the imaginary rectangle. Then the diagonals are the asymptotes as shown. Then half of 4.5 is 2.25. So the coordinate here would be negative 3 comma 1.25 L1. Then R1, negative 1 minus 2.25, negative 3.25. And this is at negative 3 comma negative 3.25. L2 is 2 plus uh, 
so it's here it is at 7 comma 1.25 l2 and f r2 is 7 comma negative 3.25 as shown and we join these points with a smooth curve and extend the curve approaches but never touches the asymptotes as shown so those are the the branches of the hyperbola it is major axis transverse axis parallel to the x-axis as indicated here so that's why the, these are the branches open to the right and open to the left now for the equations of the asymptote the technique is from the standard equation we just replace this by zero so we transpose this negative term to the right so we have x minus 2 quantity square over 4 square equals y plus 1 quantity square over 3 square extract the square root so we have x minus plus minus x minus 2 over 4 equals y plus 1 over 3 cross multiply so negative 3 times x minus 2 over 4 equals y plus 1 so if we consider positive sign first so 3x over 4 negative 6 over 4 or negative 1.5 minus 1 negative 2.5 and negative 2.5 in fraction is negative 5 bubs so the one asymptote with positive slope is 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths x minus 5 hubs so this is the asymptote with positive slope and the y-intercept is negative 5 halves or negative 2.25. This is the y-axis. So that's negative 2.5. Really. For the other asymptote, uh, we use negative. So y negative 3 times x minus 2 over 4 equals y plus 1. So that's asymptote 1. Negative 3 times quantity x minus 4 over 4 equals y plus 1. So negative 3 fourths x plus 6 over 4 or plus 1.5 minus 1. So y equals negative 3 fourths, 3 fourths x plus 0.5 or negative 3 fourths x plus 1 half. So that means the slope is negative 3 fourths, which is this, and the y-intercept is 1 half or 0.5, which is true in this figure that's 0.5 the y-intercept so that is asymptote 2 then let's have problem 7 find the equation of a hyperbola with center at 1 comma 1 vertex at 1 comma 5 and a conjugate axis of 6 so center at 1 comma 1 which is here one vertex is at 1 comma 5 which is above so that means the hyperbola is has its transverse axis parallel to the y axis so the expected equation is y minus k quantity square over a square automatic a square for the positive term minus x minus h quantity square over b square equals 1 so that's the expected equation y minus k quantity square over a square minus quantity x minus h square over b square equals 1. So h is 1, k is also 1, no problem. Then the vertex, upper vertex, the distance from the center is 5 minus 1. a is 5 minus 1, so it is equal to 4. Conjugate length of conjugate axis is 2b 2b equals 6 so that means b is 3 so c is square root of a square plus b square square root of 4 square plus 3 square and that is equal to 5 although it's not required here because you are just uh, looking for the equation of this hyperbola so substitute here because a is already known b is also known 3 a is 4 then k is 1, h is also 1. So we have y minus 1 quantity square over 4 square 
la minus quantity x minus 1 square over 3 square equals 1. 4 square is 16, 3 square is 9. 16 times 9 is 144. Multiply everything by 144. At the same time, expand. So 144 over 16 is 9. So this is 9 times quantity y square minus 2y plus 1. Then minus 16 times quantity x square minus 2x plus 1 equals 144. So distribute 9x square, 9y square minus 18y plus 9 minus 16x square plus 32x minus 16 equals 144. So the equation is 9y square minus 16x square minus 18y plus 32x then negative 160 plus 9 so minus 151 equals 0. So the final answer is 9y square minus 16x square minus 18y plus 32x minus 151 equals 0. So we proceed to problem 8. Find the eccentricity of the hyperbola whose Equation is 9x squared minus 16y squared plus 18x plus 64y minus 91 equals 0. Eccentricity is C over A. If we transform this to the standard form of equation of hyperbola, then we can find A and B. Then C is square root of A squared plus B squared, so we can also find C. Then from there, we can now obtain the eccentricity which is c over a so complete the square in x that's 9 quantity x square plus 2x plus 1 then minus 16 quantity y square minus 4y plus 4 equals 91 uh, 91 plus 9 times 1 minus 16 times 4 so 91 plus 9 is 100 minus 16 times 4, 36, 36. So this is 9 times x plus 1 square minus 16 times quantity y minus 2 square equals 36. Divide everything by 36. So this is x plus 1 square over 4 square and 4, sorry, over 4 and 4 is 2 square. Then minus y minus 2 square over 36 over 16 and that is 9 over 4, and 9 over 4 is 3 halves quantity square. So x plus 1 quantity square over 2 square minus y minus 2 square over quantity 3 halves, or 9, 9 over 4 equals 1. So let's make these squares. x plus 1, so a is 2, b is 3 halves, because... 9 over 4 is 3 halves quantity square. So C is square root of A square plus B square, or C square equals A square 2 square plus 3 halves square. So C is 5 halves or 2.5. So the eccentricity therefore is C 2.5 over 2, and that is 5 fourths or 1.25. Problem 9. Determine the length of the subtangent and subnormal to the curve y squared equals 4x minus 4 at the point 5 comma negative 4. y squared equals 4 times x minus 4 is a parabola open to the right. We can transform this to the standard form. y squared equals 4, length of lattice rectum 4, quantity x minus 1. So the vertex is at 1 comma 0. <coughs> it is open to the right. So the vertex is here. 1 comma 0 open to the right. So the point of tangency 5 comma negative 4 is shown. Then we draw tangent line to that point intersecting the x-axis and we will call the intersection with the x-axis as a sub t comma zero because y is zero there and the equation of this tangent 
by analgium approach we replace y square by y y t and x by one half of x plus x sub t so y y t equals four times quantity one half of quantity x plus x t minus four so this is two y y t y times negative 4 equals 2 times quantity x plus 5 minus 4. So therefore, this is 2x plus 4y plus 6 equals 0. So that's the equation of the tangent. The slope of the tangent is negative a over b, so negative 2 over 4. So that's negative 1 half. So the length of the subtangent is this horizontal projection of the tangent. So we find a t first. We just substitute x for a sub t, y for 0. So 2 times a sub t plus 4 times 0 plus 6 equals 0. So a sub t is equal to negative 3. So that means the length of the subtangent is 5 horizontal projection of this tangent 5 minus negative 3 and that is 8 so t sub s sub length of subtangent is 8 another formula if you memorize it's absolute value of yt negative 4 over slope and the slope is negative 1 half so <laughs> absolute value of negative 4 over negative 1 half is also 8 so that's the other Way. While the length of the subnormal, this is normal or perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency, so let's call the point of intersection here as an, comma, 0. So since the slope of the tangent is negative 1 half, the slope of the normal line is negative of negative, negative of the reciprocal of the slope of the tangent. So negative of 1 over negative 1 half is 2. So this is 2. Then 2x minus y, or y minus y1, y minus negative 4 equals 2 quantity x minus 5. So y minus negative 4 equals slope of the normal, which is 2 quantity x minus xt, which is 5. So y plus 4 is 2x minus 10, or we write this as 2x minus y, then minus 14 equals 0. 2x minus y minus 14 equals 0. So we replace x by a n and y by 0. So 2 a n minus 0 equal minus 14 equals 0. So a n equals 7. So the projection of this normal line upon the x-axis is a n 7 minus 5, so it is 2. n s equals 7 minus 5, so n s length of the subnormal is 2 units. Another formula is it is absolute value of slope of tangent times y t. The slope of tangent is negative 1 half times y sub t negative 4 negative 1 half times negative 4 is 2, absolute value of 2 is 2. So that's the other way, I just dictate it. Then problem 10. This problem was in Civil Engineers Licensure Board exam in November 2016. Find the length of the subtangent to the curve x square plus y square equals 25 at the point negative 3 comma 4. So, by analgium approach, we replace x by x, x t, y by y, y t. Then substitute this point of tangency. From calculus approach, we differentiate this. So, I'll just apply uh, an analytic geometry approach. If you want to apply calculus approach, then you can as long as your a student in a review for licensure exams. So, x, x, t, so that's the, by the way, the circle has radius 5, origin at 0, 0. 
center at 0, 0, rather, center at the origin, and the radius is 5 as shown. And this is the point of tangency, negative 3, 4, so this is the tangent line. And we denote the coordinates of this point as a sub d, 0. So, by analgium approach, x, x sub t, plus y, y sub t equals 25. Substitute x t, negative 3, y t, 4, x times negative 3 plus y times 4 equals 25. Simplifying, 3x minus 4y plus 25 equals 0. So, this point, we substitute y equals 0, solve for x, which is a sub t, 380 minus 4 times 0 plus 25 equals 0. So a sub d is negative 25 over 3. So therefore, to make the length of subtangent positive, it is right x minus left x. So it is negative 3 minus negative 25 over 3. And that is equal to 16 over 3. So the length of the subtangent is 16 over 3. Another formula is absolute value of yt, which is 4, over slope of the tangent, which is the slope of this line, negative 3 over negative 4, negative a over b. Remember, from lines, straight lines. So 3 fourths, positive 3 fourths. So t sub s is y sub t, 4, absolute value of 4, over 3 fourths. And that is still positive. So 4 over 3 fourths is 16 over 3. For the length of subnormal, which is this line here, perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency, although it's obvious it passes through the origin, the center, because this is a circle, but let's just assume we do not know the coordinates of the intersection of the normal line with the x-axis. So we'll just call that a sub n gamma 0. Then the slope of the normal line is the negative reciprocal of, uh, sorry, the we substitute, by the way, the equation of this normal line is we just interchange coefficients and change sign. So the equation of the normal line is 4x plus 3y equals 4 times xt plus 3 times yt. 4x plus 3y equals 4 times xt, and xt is negative 3, plus 3 times y sub t, which is 4. The right side is 0, so that proves that this is really at 0, 0. So 4x plus 3y equals 0. So substitute x for a n, y for y equals 0. 4 a n plus 3 times 0 equals 0, so a n is indeed 0. Therefore, the length of the sub normal, which is this horizontal projection of this normal line, is 0 minus negative 3, and that is 3. So length of subnormal is 3 units. For another formula, it is ns equals absolute value of slope times yt. So m is... 3 fourths and y sub t is 4. So absolute value of 3 fourths times 4 is 3. So n, n sub s is still 3. So problem 11, determine the equation of the diameter of the conic 16x squared plus 25y squared equals 4, 400, which bisects all chords of slope 1 up. So remember the procedure. We go, we're going to differentiate this equation and replace y prime or dy dx by the slope of parallel chords, which is one, half, one fifth in this case. So we have 16 times 2x plus 25 times 2y y prime equals 0. Divide everything by 2, so we have 16x plus 25 yy prime, 16x plus 25y and y prime is 1 fifth equals 0. Simplifying, 
the equation of the diameter is 16x plus 5y equals 0. Problem 12. Determine the equation of the diameter of the conic 9x squared minus 16y squared equals 144. So this is a hyperbola. By the way, this is an ellipse with center at the origin. This is a hyperbola with center at the origin and open branches are open to the right and to the left. But that's not important. We differentiate this equation for x to 9 times 2x minus 16 times 2y y prime equals 0. Divide everything by 2. So if this is 9x minus 16y times y prime, which is 1 half, equals 0. So the equation of the diameter for this hyperbola is 9x minus 8y equals 0. Problem 13. Determine the equation of the diameter of the conic A, y squared equals 6x, which is a parabola open to the right, x squared equals negative 4y, which is a parabola with vertex at the origin, vertex at the origin open to the right, this one, vertex at the origin open downward for this parabola. Which bisects all chords of slope one third. So for this 2y, y prime equals 6, the derivative. So y, y prime equals 3, where y prime is 1 third. So y times 1 third equals 3. 3 is 6 over 2. So y times 1 third equals 3. So therefore, the equation of the diameter for this parabola is y equals 9. For part b, 2x equals negative 4y prime. So which simplifies to x equals negative 2y prime. So x equals negative 2 times 1 third. So x is negative 2 thirds. So that's the equation of the diameter of this parabola that is open downward, vertex at the origin. Problem 14. A canal is in the form of a semi-ellipse 240 centimeters across the top and 180 centimeters deep. How wide is the water surface when the depth of water is 120 cm? So the we imagine that this semi-ellipse has center at the origin. Now the width of the water surface, let's call that LW, is equal to 2x as shown in the figure. Call that x. This is also x. This is negative x also, but the physical meaning is just x. So the length of the water surface is 2x. The width across the top is 240, so half is 120, and the depth is 180. Since 180 is greater than 120, so the transverse axis of this ellipse, the major axis of this ellipse is on the y-axis. So this is the semi-major axis. This is A, 180, and B is 120. The coordinates of this point would be x, comma, negative 160, because this is the origin at the center. And this is 60 cm, 180 minus 120, 60 cm below the origin. So y is negative, one, negative 60. So this is at x, comma, negative 60. The expected equation is x squared over 120 squared plus y squared over 180 squared. So this is the length of the water surface. x squared over 120 squared plus y squared over 180 squared equals 1. So substitute y equals negative 60. This is at x, comma, negative 60. So x squared over 120 square plus negative 60 square over 180 square equals 1. Solving for x using your calculator, this is 1 minus 1 over 9. 60 over 3 is 1 third. 1 third square is 1 over 9. So 8 over 9. Uh, anyway, you use your calculator. Solving for x, x is 103.923 cm. So length of water surface 2x is times 2, 2 times 
103.923 to four significant figures, 207.8 centimeters. Lastly, problem 15. An elliptical table is to be formed from a standard marine plywood that is 4 feet wide and 8 feet long. Determine the minimum amount of waste, both in square inches and cubic inches, if the plywood is 1 inch thick. For the for A, because it is elliptical, half of 8 is 4 feet and in inches 4 times 12, 48 inches. A is 48 inches. B is half of 4, that's 24. 2 feet, that's that's 24 inches. So, the waste is area of plywood, which is 4 by 8, 4, 48 inches by 96 inches, then minus pi AB, pi times 48 inches by 24 inches. So, area waste is 48 inches by 96 inches, 4 feet by 8 feet, minus pi, A is half of 8, 4 feet in inches, 48 inches, B is half of 4, 2 feet, and 2 feet is 24 inches. So area of the waist is 988.9 square inches, while the volume of waist is area of waist times 1 inch thick. So 988.9 times 1 inch. So that would be equal to 988.9 cubic inches. So that's it for this video.